Rose Virginie Pelletier was born in France in 1796, more than 200 years ago. She came from a big family. There were altogether nine children. Her parents were very good Catholics and taught their children to pray, to be good and kind to everybody and to love Jesus above all things. The family lived on the island of Noirmoutier. Rose Virginie grew up a happy girl. There was no school on the island. Not needing to go to school, she spent a lot of time playing with friends by the beach. She loved the ocean and the forests. She was playful and mischievous and often got into trouble with adults. Her mother tried correcting her on many occasions, but Rose Virginie remained stubborn and continued being naughty. Once she played a trick on an old man sleeping in the sunshine. She took the wig off his bald head and hung it on the door of his house. Then she hid herself and waited to see what the old man would do when he woke up. In time, a priest came to the island. Rose Virginie's family and all their neighbors were very happy because now, at last, they were able to attend Mass and receive Jesus in Holy Communion. Not long after, Rose Virginie's father and a sister died. By the time she was 10 years old, she had lost her father and three sisters. It was a very sad and lonely time for her. When Rose Virginie was old enough to receive her first Holy Communion, she promised Jesus that she would always love and be devoted to him as long as she lived. One day, some nuns came to the island to start a school for children living on the island. Only then did Rose Virginie start to attend classes. She was a clever girl and worked hard at her studies. Her teachers were pleased with her, but they were not happy with her playful and stubborn character. Once when she misbehaved, her teacher told her, Rose, you will either become a saint or a devil. And Rose replied, Me? I'm going to be a nun. When Rose Virginie was 14, her mother broke the sad news that they would soon be leaving their beloved island home to return to the mainland because she was seriously ill and needed to be near her relatives. It was decided that Rose Virginie would go to boarding school. Being very attached to her mother, Rose Virginie was very sad because she did not want to leave her mother. At boarding school, Rose Virginie worked hard at her studies. The teachers were strict and there were difficult rules to keep. Some teachers were unkind to Rose Virginie because they did not understand her. All these made Rose Virginie miss her mother even more and she wrote home often. When Rose Virginie was 17 years old and still at boarding school, news came to her that her mother had passed away. She was also told that the funeral had already taken place. Rose Virginie cried bitterly. She wanted very much to go home, but was prevented from doing so by her sister's husband, who was then her guardian. In her sadness and loneliness, she turned to God and prayed to him to help and guide her. One day, while walking with a friend, she saw a big brick building in front of her. She was curious, wondering what the building was used for. A friend told her that it was a home for girls and young women from broken homes who did not have good parents to love and protect them. They were being looked after by nuns in that building who loved and protected them from wicked people out to take advantage of young girls. When Rose Virginie heard this, she knew at once that she wanted to join the sisters. She too wanted to carry out their good work. But her friends laughed at her. Her teachers and even family members did not believe her and advised her to wait until she was older. So Rose Virginie waited. When she reached 18, she joined the convent to become a sister. She took the name Mary Euphrasia. From then on, she gave her life to helping young girls and women in difficulties. As time passed, news of the good work she was doing in France spread. Many generous and fine young women joined the order 
and were able to help Sister Mary Euphrasia spread her work to places outside France. She named the order Sisters of the Good Shepherd. It was hard work for Mary Euphrasia. Many people did not agree with her work and made things difficult for her. There were times when Sister Mary Euphrasia and the sisters were short of money and food to feed the girls and themselves. Fortunately, generous men and women came forward to help with gifts of money. Sister Mary Euphrasia never forgot to thank God for his protection and guidance. As years went by, old age and sickness slowed her down. By that time, homes run by Sisters of the Good Shepherd had been set up in many countries. On 24th April 1868, at the age of 72, Sister Mary Euphrasia died, surrounded by sisters in the first convent that she had started in France. According to her wish, she was buried in a little chapel in the convent. After her death, many people recognized her holiness and came to pray to her at her tomb. In 1940, Pope Pius XII made her a saint. Today, St. Mary Euphrasia's spirit and work live on through the work of the Good Shepherd Sisters throughout the world, including Singapore and Malaysia.